Murray, you touched upon the incident involving Nick White, who suffered two blows to the head, two different blows uh, or different types of blows to the head during the game. I went off for a HIA, was cleared to return to the field, has since been ruled out now of Australia's game against Wales. It was a big talking point during and afterwards. There was a hearty discussion between Bob Carney, Andrew Trimble, Matt Williams and Joe Malloy on Virgin Media afterwards. And like, I guess just to outline to people at home that like, if you didn't see the incident, White appears to stumble a little bit when he sits back on his haunches uh, to speak with the physio. Uh, seems to stumble a little bit as well when he stands back up. And World Rugby's guidance around this dictates that any player with concussion or suspected concussion should be immediately and permanently removed from training or play. Among their listed visible symptoms of concussion are unsteady on feet or balance problems uh, or falling over or poor coordination. And another one is just a dazed, blank or vacant look on the player's face. That's probably debatable. Maybe after uh, that much of a test match, they're all looking pretty dazed or vacant. But um, it is crucial to note that that is only World Rugby's guidance and not the law. And yet it feels, Murray, as though incidents like this, where it does feel obvious to most people watching the game uh, what has occurred, continue to be a black eye on the game which is having a discussion about these incidents actually dictating its future. Well, the fact that it has now been revealed that Nick White stood down for 12 days underlines that it was an error, a, a big error. He shouldn't have come back on. He shouldn't have gone for an off-field HIA. There was criteria one um, in terms of the, the lack of balance there that were clearly visible. And reading the Sydney Morning Herald's piece, Tom Decent, who's been in, in Wallaby's camp, um, they they report that the Wallabies doctor and the independent match doctors were looking at the first Nick White incident where he, he throws his head at, at Mac Hansen trying to tackle him on one of those plays against 13 men. They were reviewing that at the time he collided with Josh van der Fleer's knee and took the blow there. Um, so that's why they didn't see it. Um, and if that is the case, then they've got him. They've got to make this more robust again. Like independent match day doctors is, is great. The fact that they're reviewing things is great, but it cannot be the case that someone or some people m miss something this big. Like there's members of the Australian Wallabies wider team on, on the pitch. There's someone right beside him when he has those two stumbles. The referee, Ben O'Keefe, says, I've, I've seen him stumbling. So there's lots of flagging of this and it absolutely has to be reviewed. Even if, even if he goes back on, which was the wrong thing to do, how have they not had another look at it at that stage, the, the second one, and him stumbling? I, I just can't understand how this has happened again so soon after the Jeremy Lockman one in the summer, where, again, we got a statement after the fact saying this shouldn't have happened. He clearly stumbled. He shouldn't have come back on the pitch. That's what the Criteria 1 uh, indications say. Like, there's no, there's no cause for an off-field HIA in that instance. Um, so, yeah, you're right. It's just a really bad look for a sport that is dealing with massive legal implications around this now, as well as all the, just the bad image that it, it, it puts on the game. I think, yeah, you're right. It was, it was obviously everyone, once, that, once they'd seen those clips, that he should not have come back on the pitch. And it was a, a really good discussion on Virgin. I thought Joe Malloy did an unbelievable job, as he always does, and was just bang on with, with everything he said. There's, there's no, there's no grey area here. Like the fact they've come out and said this was an er error, Underlines that he should not have come back on the pitch. What about global warming, Murray? <laughs> global warming. Science. Yeah, li listen, like it, there's just no, there's just no, there's just no doubt about this. No, there literally mean. isn't. I can't see, I can't see how, I can't see how anyone can honestly argue the the opposite. Nick White came in actually after afterwards and did the the press conference. They they put him up for media. And he said he was feeling grand and he said, look at me, you can see I'm feeling okay. I don't have any symptoms. And the Wallaby said he had nothing symptom-wise the next morning. But if there's any doubt, they should never come back on the pitch. Yeah, the HIA is an imperfect solution. I don't even know if it is necessarily a solution, Birch. Like, but obviously, as somebody who has suffered head, head injuries during your playing career, and I know it's a, a cause that is close to your heart and has been for a long time, Again, this is just anecdotal from myself, but I've had two concussions in my life, both playing rugby and like 
if there were HLUs around when I was playing like schools rugby, I probably would have passed them because I was totally lucid or sentient after getting the knocks to the head. But it was like a couple of hours later, I was getting sick of the jacks and I felt, you know, a little bit drowsy and I probably wasn't right for three or four days afterwards. And that's where I feel sometimes like the actual HIA process, as much as I absolutely understand the need for it, it the, the like chances are it's going to be bollocks every now and then because it will present differently in different players and you can pass a test and then feel dreadful afterwards and you are literally concussed. But if you pass a test and there were no, say, outward signs of your being concussed, then you're going back onto the field for however long and potentially exposing yourself to another blow to the head. And I don't know, like, um, is there anything to your mind that sticks out as, as a means of improving the protocols around this in-game at the moment? Yeah, look, I'm not a scientist. Uh, I'm not an expert on it. Uh, but I, in my opinion, the HIA process is flawed. You know, I certainly passed HIAs uh, after having a concussion. But I understand it's very difficult. So I think it's the combination of what we've actually have actually in our in our regulations, in our protocols, which weren't acted upon properly and the HIA process. So and I, I think um, I, and I'm very much in favor of if in doubt, just take them off the field um, and keep them off the field until you have time. Because look, at and I'm not saying this is why it happened, but the Australian, uh, it was a very pressurized environment that that test match, you could see from the Australians, you know, how important the result was. Nick White, you know, is a, is a competitor. He does not want to leave, leave that field. But when we had the footage, which that we had, it should be totally taken out of his hands. And again, I agree with Murray. I mean, the Jeremy Lockman won, from what I remember, and Murray, correct me if I'm wrong here, the the excuse given was uh, not enough people at the, at the stadium or a fault on the NZRU uh, part. And it was kind of just a little bit loose. That, uh, and that, that's, that's why that happened, right? Um, but again, you know, it was a high-profile incident. There's, there's court cases are about to happen, you know, which are, could decide the future of the game. And yet here and now, this weekend, with all the money, with all the camera angles, we have failed again to put player safety at the at the forefront, and we have taken. We've, you know, I don't believe Nick uh, should be involved in that decision. I don't think if you get a bang in the head, um, and if you look at if if for example it was proven that there wasn't, he stumbled because, you know, he was on a slippy part of the ground and he wasn't cussed. Well, then that's the risk we take, but. We've actually kept them out of the game. And it's that second impact syndrome. Uh, incredibly dangerous when your brain is potentially already swollen. Um, it can be can be much more dangerous and potentially lethal. Uh, it's a very dramatic year, but could be lethal or certainly long-term effects. Um, and he was allowed back on the field. And now they've said he is he was concussed or, uh, because he's taken the 12 days. But we're very lucky, I think, that he didn't have a, a further... Um, clash that maybe could have um, done more damage. And I remember John Fogarty, and, and he's he, he's come out and spoke about this. Is is he went back onto the field against them um, uh, in a match in, in Zebra or in Italy for for Leinster, having had a big bang in the first half, and his reactions, his balance, and everything were were so poor that he was more likely to get another bang. You know, so look at it's just uh, uh, again maybe we need to have all these incidents for everybody to cop on, but. Um, we're doing ourselves no favour. Uh, and I, I'll be honest, I, I did seven corporate boxes before the game. Five of them, the Q&A was about concussion. Five of them. It's, 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 it's on people's lips. People are worried about it. They see it. They see the ferocity of France, South Africa, Ireland, South Africa. Um, and we're not sending the right message um, that we're going to care for our athletes when that happens. 